It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley is here. We're going to find out what the Windows Feature Experience Pack is. Microsoft says, we're not telling you, but Mary Jo and Paul have figured it out. We'll also uh, hear from Kaven Beji, Mr. AppGet, about Wingate. And it's a week of corporate intrigue. Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. Paul's got the rundown. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 676, recorded Wednesday, June 10th, 2020. Ferris and Fifi. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Thinking about moving your data storage to the cloud? Wasabi is enterprise-class cloud storage at one-fifth the price of Amazon S3 and faster than the competition, with no fees for egress or API requests and no complex storage tiers. Start a free trial at wasabi.com and enter the code WINDOWS. And by Barracuda. Did you know that 91% of all cyber attacks start with an email? To uncover the threats hiding in your Office 365 account, get a secure and free email threat scan at barracuda.com slash windows. And by IT Pro TV. Learn the ins and outs of IT careers and get the most up-to-date training with IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash windows for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription. Use the code WW30 at checkout. <laughs> it's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. Here they are. From their respective, <laughs> what are you laughing Lakers. at? Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, your Microsoft heroes, Paul Therott from Therott.com, Mary Jo Foley yep. from AllAboutMicrosoft.com, and together they form the dynamic duo of Microsoft reporting. Hello. 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 It's like the Lenny and Squ Squiggy yellow. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, who's Lenny and who's Squiggy? That's the question. Yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> um, okay. 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 Here we are gathered together once again talking about Microsoft. And uh, I think you, I don't yep. know, you buried the lead. I don't know. Maybe, but you know this this show started off pretty weak. Yeah, but we're trying to buff it, it up. up. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it ended up getting pretty good. It <laughs> okay. did actually. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so let's start with the weak part. <laughs> no, no, you're you're going to care about this, Leo, yeah. and your and your radio show people are going to care about this a lot. The Windows Experience Pack. Right. What Windows is that? E Feature Experience Pack. Feature. Right. Experience Feature Pack. Where, where would we see this? This is in uh, settings, right? If you go to... Um, yeah, if you go to About Your PC and you have the yeah. May 2020 update... Oh, okay. So you'll, you need that. You'll see this thing, right? You'll see this. And it'll say that you have Windows Feature Experience Pack installed. Right. And then you're like, okay, what is this? I, I didn't install it. It just seemed to install it itself. It just comes with Windows 2010, yep. 2004? Yeah, 2004. Yep. Yep. So... Um, there's been rumors about this thing being part of 10X, but it's also part of 2004. And so when I asked Microsoft this week, hey, everybody's getting this thing called the Windows Feature Experience Pack. What is it? We have nothing to share. <laughs> it's always a good <laughs> like, sign. Okay, so wait. Like, it's it's an automatic update. Like, you don't choose if you can get it or don't get it. It just installs, and you don't want to say what's in it. Nope. Why, well, why would nope. they even put it put it in the UI? Just don't say anything. Don't put it. Don't put that line in there that says it's yeah. installed, and people wouldn't even know. You wouldn't right? know. To ask. It's not. We're not playing. Where's Waldo? Like <laughs> you just put it somewhere in there. And you, you people are going to find it. Yep. Right. So they don't so, even want to say what it is. 
No, right. they don't. So I asked around. I, I'm like, people must know what this is, right? And there have been a lot of rumors. Walking Cat was the first one who found a uh, reference to this back in winter, uh, the last winter. Yeah, it was December, and, I think, was the beginning. Yeah, everybody was just guessing, like, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. And it turns out it's one of the features called... Um, Features on demand. So there's a whole list of things in Windows that are called features on demand that are things that install alongside the operating system that Microsoft doesn't want you to uninstall. So Notepad is an example, Internet Explorer, um, Paint, PowerShell ISE. Like there's a lot of things like this, right? And now they added a list that also says, oh, yeah, and the Windows Feature Experience Pack. But it doesn't say what it is. It just says it includes features critical to Windows functionality. <laughs> it's 44 megs in size. Okay. And if you get Windows 10 2004, you get this, whatever version of 2004 you're on. So I, I asked a few other people, I'm like, so what, what's in this thing? Like when you look inside, what's in it? And so what's in it mm -hmm. are things like um, the, the updated snip and sketch tool. <laughs> Is in there. Um, so it's not like know, the Ark I'm of like, the Covenant. It's no, no. Slightly less right? aggressive. It's I not, know. It's not going to melt Nazis or anything. It's just, yeah, yeah, no. no. Okay. So now listen job. to other things in there. Updated text input panel and updated shell suggestion user interface. I'm yeah. like, okay, so all of the, what do these things have in common? They're part of the shell of Windows. So it turns out, I believe, oh. that this thing is going to be, Microsoft's going to put all these shell components that in this bundle. Sense. And so instead of having to test and validate and update each of these things separately, they're going to put this thing in the store. And every time they have updates to this, they'll just put them into this bundle and then you'll just get an update to the feature experience pack. Okay. What's so yeah. hard about saying this? <laughs> <laughs> right. And right? this is what uh, Google did with Android, where they took out more and more of right. the OS right. and put it yeah. in as store components that you could update yep. just like mobile apps, right? Yep. Uh, and it's a little bit like the the WinUI or um, Project Reunion mm -hmm. stuff where they strip it out of, in that case, UWP and yeah. uh, stop uh, it being required, uh, stop it from requiring a very specific version of Windows 10. They just make it available yep. across versions. Yep. Now, but I wonder if this would be version agnostic as well. Could the Windows feature experience pack <laughs> version, whatever it is, 120, yeah. work on, you know, 1909 to uh, 2004 and some other, I mean, or is it still tied um, to that version? So I'll tell you what I know about that. So um, mm -hmm. on the dummy app for this thing that Microsoft has in its store right now, that's not the real feature experience pack, it says it works on all versions of Windows 10. But in the in the feature on demand notes, it says 2000, yep. 20, 2004 and above only. In Xbox, oh, okay. by the way. In Xbox. In X yeah. <laughs> so the hypothesis, actually this kind of makes sense, is that they would like to be able to update UI features more often Separate. than twice a year. Yes. As correct. needed. And by putting yep. it in the store... You just can get that update as whenever right. they have something. It's to say. a bundle, right? Yeah. Anytime they fix something or add something to any of those features, they just update the bundle and push it to you. One thing, boom, you got it. That makes sense. Why couldn't um, they say that? I don't understand. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. know. Yeah, it's just no, it just makes sense. Uh, I know. Uh, that's what I was like. It makes sense. It's a good idea. So let's not talk only, about it. Let's say yeah, nothing the only part to share. That doesn't make sense <laughs> is them not talking about it. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. No, and so my my other guess about why they might not talk about it is I see when I look in, in a screenshot that I have that there are some references to Composable Shell in there too. So Composable Shell was this idea that Microsoft had of making different shells for different things that have Windows 10 inside. So like if you were running Embedded, it would have a different UI. If you were running it on Xbox, it would have a different UI. So I think they don't want to open that whole can of worms about talking about Windows Core OS and Composable Shell and their long term grand plan maybe that's why they don't want to talk about it i don't know that's a guess but yeah so if Weird. you see windows feature experience pack now at least you kind of know what it is okay i like it yeah yep. they yeah. approve of it yep. not the communication yep. part but no no that's good the one reason you yeah. might want it somebody in the chat room's pointing out pc guy 8088 mm -hmm. that one reason you might 80, want to tell 8088. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, yeah. PC nice. guy okay. 8088. I guess he has an XT. Yeah. 
the original uh, yeah. PC. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, this one, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he says <laughs> sometimes people disable uh, the Windows Store and Windows Store apps. So you might want to let people know. I, right. Because oh, so, it has to go through the store. If you're going to start doing updating that way, it might be worth yeah. letting them know. Yeah. yeah. Might I, be. I mean, Microsoft. Recommend this. <laughs> yeah. Why keep it a secret? I know. Are they afraid people will? I don't know. What would they do? What could people do? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. Maybe you don't want to get the new text box, text input box, so you disable the store. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. By the way, I, I like how Microsoft. Don't know why they won't talk. I like how Microsoft <laughs> says that the 2004 update is throttling up. Yes. <laughs> Throttling up. Throttling, throttling, throttling up. up. <laughs> Good uh, military language right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so, so uh, did you get it yet on your surface? No. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about that too. Oh, so, yesterday. Sorry. Okay. Well, we could if you want to talk about it now. Wait, did we cut that item? I think no, you, you cut fixed it. it. I don't see it. No, it's there. It's Microsoft fixed a blocker issue. Oh, I see. Our national I see. nightmare. Yes. Okay. We could talk about that now if Let's you want to talk. the about national it. nightmare. <laughs> okay. So uh, Surface Pro 7, Surface Laptop 3, and some other Surface devices can't get the May 2020 update because of a certain blocker that has been put on it. And the blocker is because of always on, always connected, Some sometimes resulting in blue screens and automatic restarts. So instead of um, not pushing out the Windows 2020 update, Microsoft said, you know what? We're just going to put a block on those Surface devices. Well, Patch Tuesday was yesterday, and they fixed that. They mitigated that problem. So you would think, okay, I'll apply the patch from Patch Tuesday, and then I'll get the new update, right? No. So oh, they... Oh, I know. Mary jo, I'm such Mary a simple jo. person. Didn't read the note jo. at the very last <laughs> sentence of the KB. No, article. the very last <laughs> sentence of the KB article says we're going to hold on for so, till until the coming weeks to remove this blocker just to make sure everything's okay. So even if you yeah. apply the patches from yesterday that fix it, you still can't get the May update well, unless you force it. I feel like unless I think I've heard from people who have gotten it. So I think some people really on the Surface Lab. I thought so. Yeah, I think so. I well, I talked to one guy yesterday who who said I have it on my Surface laptop and it bricked it. And I'm like, what did you do? Force it and go around it? He goes, like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So I'm like, yeah, don't Ladies do and that. Gentlemen, Microsoft hardware. <laughs> I know it's and that's why it's so befuddling, right? You're like, okay, of course Surface is going to get this update right away, like especially the newest ones. <laughs> yeah. Surface Pro Seven and Surface Lab Three. Yeah. Nope. Nope. So I don't. St I do not have. Do it not yet. seek. Do not seek, Mary. I'm jo. not seek. Well, I can. If you seek, it still blocks. You still won't get. So it. I. Yeah. I did seek, but I did not find. <laughs> no. Too many show titles in the first ten minutes. It's making my mind blow. <laughs> uh, um, somebody in the chat room says Lenovo's are also GM93 says Lenovo's seem to be having trouble too. Yeah, oh, I saw same. something about that today. Yeah. yeah. So that's another. That's what the number two. It's going great, maker. guys. Everything's yeah, it's fine. Going great. Just, uh, just relax. <laughs> uh. You know, like I said last week, if it is going to like do anything bad to my laptop three, which I baby, I don't want to put this update on because I don't really care if I get it. So I'm willing to wait. I am willing to wait. The, the, the mm -hmm. list. This is from Windows Central. A list of troubles with Lenovo ThinkPads yeah. include. Ultra nav driver, yellow warning mark appearing on disk drive, green border appearing around movies and TV app, the F11 hotkey not working normally, and a blue screen of death. <laughs> so take your pick. There seem right. a few problems. It's worth waiting, everyone. Worth Don't waiting. Rush. Yeah. Yeah. That's the new slogan, Windows 2004, worth waiting for. Exactly. They should use that. Right. Keep keep <laughs> waiting. Yeah. It's worth waiting. Yeah. Keep yeah. waiting. Keep waiting. Oh, boy. I know. So, yeah, that's why he said our national nightmare is somewhat over. <laughs> Right. Not completely over. Well, also over. because uh, some Surface PCs are still, not, are still being blocked, even with this yeah. fix. Uh, Surface, I think yeah. Surface Book 3, right? Day 2. Surface Book, Windows yeah. held hostage.
there is. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen people say different older Surface Pros and Surface Books and Surface Pro X are also all blocked. Um, so yeah. weird. Yeah. Does that, okay. should I draw any conclusion from that like they're not testing <laughs> very well or something or what? What That's should, fair. Really? Um, so what, what yeah. I hear is these problems did not show up on mass until Microsoft put it in release preview ring and started rolling it out to the mainstream. But if that's true, it's weird that didn't show up till then. Right? How is that possible? Because you, I know you've got to think a lot of Easter insiders like have surface it's hardware. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right? that's, we talked about this, the nexus of yeah. surface yeah. owners and insiders has got to be really, really big. It's got to be, it's got to be. Yep. I did hear from one person at Microsoft who said um, they weren't even letting some people at Microsoft test 2004 on surfaces. And I'm like, no, you you guys had to have been testing this because you guys are like the real ultimate canary ring guinea pig pool, right? Yep. <laughs> so you should have been testing this. You totally should have been. I don't understand. I know. I don't understand either. No. I'm I'm perplexed, and I'd like I'd like to see a public answer from Microsoft about this. Maybe from Panos, right? Panos yeah, took over Windows. What you're going to get is and, a post from John Cable that explains that everything's fine, and we don't know what the three I people know, complaining right. are, and two of them are on this no, podcast. You're right. You know, you're so right. that's yeah, that's what you're we're right. going to get. Yep, no, I would love works. to see Panos. You know what would be great. Panos just saying in a tweet, this is why I took over Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Blame Steven Sanofsky. Something like that. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, honestly, everything does tie back to him. It's he's like the uh, three it was a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon of Microsoft, you know. It the all, gift that keeps on giving. It all started with yeah. Sanofsky. And there's another show title. So I'm telling you, I'm not in trouble at the end of the show. Um, <laughs> You might want to stockpile these for later. <laughs> yeah, really safe. That one, that one's an evergreen. <laughs> yeah. I can use that. That any, one is evergreen. Anytime I want. Anytime you I want. I did get the yeah. first call of the year. I think uh -huh. it was a prank, but I'm not sure. On the radio show, from somebody saying, "Microsoft wants me to downgrade to 2004." <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're I like, think, um. <laughs> I, th I think he must have known better, but maybe not. Anyway, I had to explain. Yeah, that's. That looks like 2004 because there's no dot or anything. Yeah. But it's 2004. I think the dot yeah. would solve all the problems. I think it might. <laughs> uh, by the way, H12, H10. <laughs> Surprised you just can't rattle these off. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's 21H1. It's it's so Is that right? No. Nope. Could be. What are you talking about? Yeah. No. <laughs> He's talking about the build that came out today. New festering build. Oh. 20 H2. 20 H2. I put it in no. the notes, yeah. Oh, there was a, There is a new 21 H1, I think, too, as well. No. Not yet. No? Okay. Not, Not yet. yet. But that's coming. Actually, that was supposed to come coming this month, soon, remember? Right? They're, they're going to start yeah, uh, testing. Yeah, it is supposed to come month. this month. Yep. Okay. I thought but no, today's the chat build, they got it, so. No. no. Today's build, 19645, is 20, 20 H2. And guess what? There is a new feature in it. <gasps> Oh, talk to me. Is what's the experience? <laughs> Is it the nested experience pack? virtualization <laughs> on AMD processors? Nested virtualization. That's interesting. You could have a virtual, a virtual within a virtual. <laughs> Is that what that? I means? think it's a Hyper V thing. Let me see. Like I could have a virtual machine inside a virtual machine inside Why a virtual machine. Want... It's like the virtual um, machine's not running slowly enough. Could I put one inside of it? <laughs> Nested virtualization is being used by IT pros to set up home labs. It's being used to support our developer community in accelerating Android emulation. If you want to use Hyper-V containers in a VM, you guessed it, nested virtualization. Containers in a VM, that's what that's the yeah. nesting. Right. So this is um, mostly of interest, I'd say, to Hyper-V people, um, and yeah. it's in right. this new fast ring build. It's for AMD processors specifically. So that means... It probably already exists on Intel. It does already exist, yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. So not that exciting, but no. at least it's one new Something. thing because yeah. there's been nothing. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay. let's take a little time out before we get an update <laughs> on last week's, what do we call it? 
<laughs> Last week's uh, drama of we the could, week. We should have called it App Gate. App Gate. <laughs> App Gate Part Wind Two. Gate. Coming up. First word from our fine sponsor, Wasabi. Hot stuff, but it's not hot stuff that you eat with sushi. It's hot cloud storage, and it is awesome. Fanta I Wasabi is superb technology that blows away the other guys. But the problem is everybody knows the other guys. It's that old, you know, nobody got fired by buy for buying IBM. When you're looking for cloud storage, and nowadays I think a lot of people are because we're just generating so much data. And it's a, it's a crazy merry-go-round trying to buy more on-prem storage for, you know, and you know, I'm going to need another terabyte this month and another terabyte this month. And it's just a merry-go-round. You never ending. Whereas with Wasabi, you can put it up in the cloud. And, it, and you know, you just get, you can get as much as you want just as on demand. Um, but people go, oh, no, no, the boss says Google, Amazon, or Microsoft's got to be the big three. Please add this to the list. Just one name, Masabi. And and I think you convinced the boss. Let me tell you why. First of all, it's 80% cheaper than Amazon S3. I know everybody cares about the body, bottom line. It's actually less expensive, a lot less expensive than just the support contract for the same amount of on-prem storage. That should tell you. That should tell you something. <laughs> why are you buying on-prem? Because, you know, you got to get a box, you got to open it up, you got to set it up, you got to put it in, you got to test it. You gotta blah, blah, blah. Whereas you just, you it, you can literally have another petabyte of wasabi, you know, on demand. Just say, yeah, I need it. Flat rate pricing, very affordable. In fact, it's so much more affordable than anybody else. If you're a managed service provider at reselling, you're going to love wasabi because you can, you can earn more and still charge your clients less. It, there's that big a differential. There's another thing I like about Wasabi that's great for people who know, you know, you've, we, we're going to need another terabyte this week or whatever. They call it reserved capacity storage. So you can pay as you go, $5.99 a terabyte a month. That's it, flat rate. No tiers, nothing. It's very simple. Or if you know, look, I'm going to need X amount X every week or every month or every year, you can buy ahead, reserve the capacity. And if you compare the price, you will see a big, big difference. You can purchase cloud storage in one, three, or five-year increments. You get the, the more you buy, the longer the term, the more you save. Pretty simple. So check that out, too, especially for people. And I know there are a lot of you who have just, I know I'm going to need this much more every year. I'm buying it every year. I know, I know I'm going to need it every year. Durability, better, I would say, than on-prem storage for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're hosted in premier tier four data centers, highly secure, but also fully redundant. They do active integrity checking. Every single object stored is checked for integrity every 90 days. And since there's redundant uh, uh, redundant um, data centers, if there's a problem with one file, you've got to copy somewhere else. You're never going to lose data. But that's why they got 11 nines of durability, 11 nines. That's, that would be, in effect, you'd lose one file every, I don't know, 649,000 years. Every geologic millennium. <laughs> Wasabi follows best practices in security and design. They're HIPAA compliant. They're FINRA compliant. They're CJIS compliant. They, of course, give you all sorts of control. There's access control policies like ACLs, bucket policies. So you can say you have access to this. You don't have access to that. The best part is Wasabi has the capability of making data immutable. You can set it, just set the immutable bit, and nothing can change it. No fumble-fingered employee, no ransomware. It's immutable. It can't be erased. It can't be altered. Um, I just, I feel like this is, oh, I, I'll give you another tool because you got to convince the boss. I know. Uh, it uses Amazon's a a API, the S3 API. So you already have tools that will work with it. You already know how to use it. There are tons of tools out there. And they don't charge you for API requests, nor do they charge you for egress. It's always something that's frosted me with S3. <clears throat> I go, oh, it's very affordable. Put my storage up there. You want it back? It'll co it's going to cost you. <laughs> it's like, come on. <laughs> I already paid you once. So not Wasabi. No fees for egress. No complex storage tiers. They follow industry 
best security practices, for instance, all your data is encrypted, even if you don't request it. It's just, it's just encrypted in place and, of course, in transit. It's highly disruptive technology that is 80% cheaper and up to six times the speed of the industry leader. It's Wasabi. <clears throat> Look, you got to try it for yourself. Just, you know, do a do a couple of benchmarks. Go to wasabi.com. Use the offer code WINDOWS. Please use that so they know you, he you heard it on the show. <clears throat> wasabi.com. Click the free trial link. Enter the code WINDOWS. You can try it for a month. Really bang on it. Get, the, get a sense of how fast it is, how easy it is how it works with your existing tools. Then join the movement. Migrate your data to the cloud with confidence. Wasabi.com. W-A-S-A-B-I.com. Please, please use the offer code Windows so they know you heard it here. Sometimes people use the offer code TWIT. This makes Paul and Mary Jo very unhappy. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say I kick my cat. Angry but, face. You know, please don't make them unhappy. <laughs> I beg of you, use the offer code <laughs> Windows. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, what is it, Wingate? Is that what we're going to call it? <laughs> Wingate, AppGate. <laughs> AppGate, Wingate. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, Mary Jo and I, received an email from the author of AppGet uh, to uh, provide some additional information. and We talked about this last week. and Some clarity, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a pretty much a clone, what Microsoft's offering with Wingate. So first, yeah, so we should I, say he, he heard oh. us talking about this on Windows Weekly, and he said he is a huge fan of the show, Yay. and he has been okay. since day one. Yay, <laughs> so Kevin, he was excited. Well, the most you. important thing yeah. is he provided the pronunciation okay. of his name. please. Which yes. uh, he says Mary Jo pronounced perfectly uh, last week. Kayvon Beji. Kayvon Beji. Kayvon Beji. Yay, I would have not pronounced it that way, so I'm glad I asked. Um, <laughs> but Yeah, so I, I will say, you know, so just as kind of a backgrounder, you know, Issues like this, I write about this, and I express a certain amount of outrage over what happened to him. And I, there are a lot of misunderstandings over what I'm upset about, and not that I matter, but, you know, because on my site I write about it, you know, that's what I hear back. People say, oh, Paul, it's an open source license. It's fine. Microsoft didn't do anything wrong, blah, 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 whatever. My issue uh, was more in the way they treated this person, right, uh, that I felt it was unethical and that for a corporation the size of Microsoft to not – uh, do the right thing with regards to an individual I found to be rather bizarre. Now, his issues are actually slightly different. Um, uh, he was a little concerned that they weren't, um, he wasn't credited at all in the original announcement, despite the, you know, months of time they spent communicating and so forth. Uh, but some of the, some of this information that he did provide, I think is really, really interesting. And actually one of the, one of the points that he makes addresses something uh, that you brought up Leo last week, which was his decision to use the Apache uh, license, right? Mm -hmm. Which he says was deliberate. Um, and he has his reasons for that, but uh, you know, he makes a good point, you know, um, because they didn't copy the code, uh, his choice of license doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they didn't copy the code. So, so we didn't know uh, that we didn't know how much of his yeah. code was in their code. So yeah. that's mm -hmm. license, the licensing. Just it's doesn't irrelevant. Apply, but yeah. Unless you fork yeah. the yeah. project, you don't have to worry about the license. Yeah. 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 Um, but it also, he expresses something in here that is really interesting to me. I just mentioned how, you know, on my own site, I'm sure Mary Jo has the same experience on hers. You get this kind of pushback from people who are like, I don't see why you're making a big deal out of this. I don't think that Microsoft did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy is obviously subjected to this as well. I thought that the thing that he wrote was very even handed and fair. Yeah. And it wasn't like he was ranting or, uh, you know, acting mm -hmm. all upset about it or whatever. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, he feels the need to express like, Contrary to how some people feel, he's clearly gotten this feedback. I don't claim to have invented package managers. I mean, it's awful yeah. that he has to say I something like that. I mean, who, who just, I, 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 I just, the, the world is so terrible. And it's it's sad that someone who creates something like this, and, and we've seen that, you know, Mahedi, the same thing. Mahedi made his GUI front end for Winget, and people are like, oh, this doesn't do this. And it's like, dude, they announced something on Tuesday and he released it on Friday. Could we just applaud this? Like it's a, you know, it's kind <laughs> yeah. of, I, I, I don't understand what the complaining is about. But anyway, um, he does feel that it was unfair to drag him along for a year and then ignore him for six months and release a product based on his ideas as their own. Uh, he doesn't feel that it was theft or license violation, just mm -hmm. that it wasn't fair. And yeah, that's 100%. That's a, that, that, that is my um, that was my complaint as well. Yeah. Um, and yep. he says that Microsoft never actually even mentioned AppGet or any other package managers the inspiration for WinGet. And if they had, he probably never would have said a thing. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if yeah. they had just mentioned <laughs> that that's where this came from, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then what they did instead was mention a list of package managers and AppKit was one of them as if, you know, oh, there are these other things out in the world. We never really even looked at them. You know, they're not important because yeah. we have one now. So, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Is there anything else in here that sticks out to you, Mary Jo? Um, yeah, well, he, I, I asked during the show last week about how much did he really even care about joining Microsoft? Yeah. So um, he addressed that in his note to us. He said, uh, just them saying we couldn't come to terms I objected to because I heard from them, six months went by, I heard nothing. Um, and I, and they were, it sounds like they were clear that if they had come to terms, he could have stayed in Vancouver, Canada and worked in the Microsoft office there. Um, and he, he's, he's just more perplexed about what was the radio silence there. Like, Hey, I talked to you yeah. about a job and it seemed like things were going well. And then you just didn't talk yeah. to me at all for six months. So I think, that's that's also an interesting point. Um, yeah, then today I asked him, now that we're on a first-name basis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now that we can pronounce each other's names. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I asked him, what else did I ask him here? Let me see. Oh, you uh, he, Did you ask him if he... W- oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm trying to find what I asked him here. Yeah. Oh, I said... Um, what, what else did you and Andrew, the manager from Microsoft, talk about? And he said, I've given them a couple suggestions about things that Microsoft could do to regain some open source goodwill. And we're still talking about that. So that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because there was a mention uh, in that post that Andrew had made about uh, them communicating and hopefully yeah. they would have something to say more about Com- that. Soon. Something more to say. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. I think they're doing the so, right, Microsoft's doing the right thing now, but it's too bad it had to later. come to it this way but yeah right so it's cool that this guy happens to be a fan of the show that's neat and um yeah i feel like we, you know i the important thing for me is that everyone lands on the right side of history here i mean i i mm-hmm. my outrage was about microsoft's treatment of him yeah and, and the other stuff is whatever i mean i there's a conversation right. we had around all this stuff but right yeah. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm, it's interesting to me. I don't mean to say I'm glad he is outraged. It's the same thing, but I mean, I'm glad we weren't yeah. missing the point, you know, because right. mm-hmm. a lot of people have, absolutely have, and it's, it bothers me, but I'm not surprised that he's, he's probably gotten a lot of negative feedback from people who think he's yeah. some kind of a attention hound or whatever Complainer. it is. And that's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> you know, it's funny because this happens all the time in the Macintosh world. It's mm. super yeah. common. We, there's even a term for it. There was a being Sherlocked. There was a, yeah. a wonderful oh, yeah. search program for uh, the Macintosh called Sherlock, and when Spotlight was announced, uh, oh my God, they they basically put it out of business. You've been Sherlocked, and right. uh, it happens awesome. every year when Apple announces its new stuff. They, yeah. you know, and it's not. It's pretty much the same as here, happened here. They. They copy an idea. The idea is so good. They say, yeah, let's put that in the operating system, that kind of thing. Without any um, recognition. They never say. Someone else, did. Never. it's the worst. Yeah. Never do it. Because that's, that's really a bad. Whole, that's, that's very Sanofsky-like. You know, everything was invented here. You know. I was um, sitting with a, a good friend, Ray Slikinski, who wrote one of the early podcast applications when Apple announced, oh, yeah, we're going to put podcasts in iTunes. And I just, yeah. he just slumped. You know, it's like, oh. <laughs> He's like, like yep. eyes <laughs> There goes all yeah. my sales. I guess I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. But that yeah. happens. In, this is, you know, when you're um, a little yeah. fish and you're swimming in a pond with a lot of really big fish with sharp teeth, you can't sure. be surprised yeah. if you occasionally oh, get swallowed fish. whole. Well, this right. Size of the Titan. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got the last laugh on Apple because now, thanks to Power Toys, we have the uh, that run search feature. I don't I forget what it's called, and uh, where you hit, you know, Command Space or whatever it is on the Mac, and now we have Power Toys Run, where we hit Alt Space and it brings up the search bar in the middle of the screen. Looks exactly like it, and I, I <laughs> hope God that they sue Microsoft over that because I'm pretty sure that can, actually that was that's the successor to Sherlock, isn't it? Technically, right? Because you yeah. use it to find apps to run. Yeah, I can't right. remember what the features. Did, but um, I think no, it's just like searching your hard drive. You know, it's index, like the Windows yeah. index. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a good, it's a good feature. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, there's a lot to be said for you know. Remember, Microsoft got in trouble with the DOJ for putting a browser in Windows. There's a lot to yeah. be said for putting functionality into the operating system if it's really that useful. Oh. 
Bill Gates has pages and pages of testimony. <laughs> to that exact yep. I would defend putting a browser in the, an operating system. That's pretty obviously. I think the so issue I wouldn't the have time, originally, but yeah, yeah, at the time I felt like at that was time, weird. It was bad. Today yeah. it is a baseline for an operating system. Yeah. 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 Although I guess on the other hand, today because there are such great third-party browsers, um, Chrome, Firefox, whatever, uh, you, you kind of almost don't need it in the operating system anymore. But yeah, yeah today uh, no one would complain because whatever everybody the does Raspberry it. OS has some stupid little browser in it. Uh, you know, nobody yeah. cares. No. no. Things change. No. So yeah, that's a good a good sequel on Mr. App Get. Yeah. <laughs> It's a nice follow up. But I, I, uh, jeez, I don't know. I still, I still feel like they could do more for this guy. But well, well they did. It sounds like they're still right? talking. Yeah, they're going to they give did. Him credit. Yeah, they did. If you go to the GitHub site now, he's listed as um, in the. I think in the yeah. Read Me or somewhere. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you have a little picture of him in the up up uh, about box with a candle. <laughs> that's one thing we then didn't know. Then it says know. hire this guy. We didn't know how much of his code they had reused, and since they right. reused none. Um, yeah. then, you know, it is kind of moot. I think, I think this came up and I, maybe I'm getting this wrong, but I think he wrote, didn't he write his in C sharp and they did theirs in C++? Yes. It was a different language. Which That's is right. kind of interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. He used Microsoft's uh, language. Yeah. 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 Microsoft he used C -sharp. Used, they declined yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. They decided to use Bjorn Stustrip's language. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's another thing I had a guy call on uh, the radio show and say, you know, you shouldn't really knock Delphi. I still uh, write a lot of code in it. Yeah. No, you know what? You really should knock Delphi. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I said, well, He's I happen the to have the, Bible. I happen to the, have the Delphi Bible, 3 so, you know. Super Bible right in front of me. Yeah. You know, so you know, if he I says mean, it. I, but, but speaking seriously, like uh, Delphi at the time was fantastic. <laughs> and you, you had to kind of look at what was out in the world. Like the uh, Microsoft Foundation classes for C++ were terrible. Um, what Borland did was fantastic, but you know the guy that did that came to Microsoft and made .NET and made C Sharp and so there you go and made TypeScript. <laughs> C Sharp is the that's you know, the one is the place to be. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I get it, but it got it got it kept improving. It just did it with a different language. Well, thank you, Kayvon, for giving us an update. We yes. appreciate it. and for listening. <laughs> it's good to yeah. know. Good yeah. to know. Mister yeah. Appget listens to the show. Another title. Um, <laughs> 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 yep. Amazon, you know, I, <laughs> by the way, I, if I was going to mention this when he said, well, but they use my code, they just copy the idea. That's kind of the whole basis for the Supreme Court case that right. Oracle is suing Google over. That's right. Uh, they didn't steal the their code. They copied yeah. their API. And apparently the lower yeah. courts held you can copyright an API. Yeah, because, well, an a Leo, an API is like a painting. Why don't you understand that? It should be obvious. <laughs> Anyone should know. Van Gogh created some of the greatest APIs in history. That's exactly right. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, Amazon is now uh, suing Google. These are these lawsuits. Yeah. Oh, well, my God. They're so actually what's... suing a guy, right? Oh, a Google guy? A uh, guy going to Google. Uh, right? Oh, are they suing him directly? Oh, I, I think they're suing him directly. It came out today. Okay. Oh. okay. Brian Hall. Yep. Oh. This yeah. Is so we know guy. this guy. Yeah, we know him. him for, Brian Hall. Decades. Yeah. yeah. He's He worked at Microsoft over 20 years. He worked on the Surface team, right? Well, it would go Many back further than that. He was on MSN Many back places. in the day. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. He's, he was all over. Right. Then he went to Amazon. And became director of product marketing for AWS, which is a pretty big deal. And, but now he wants to yes. go to Google and be director of marketing for the Google Cloud. He quit over face recognition software. Right, right. And so you, you got to remember, this is kind of a background on the facial recognition stuff. Obviously, a lot of big uh, tech companies have this capability and they sell it to law enforcement, you know, whatever. So Microsoft, I don't know, a year and a half ago, a year ago. Said, yeah, we're not doing this. Um, and uh, basically, it was kind of a it was a racial issue where more often than not, someone uh, black would come up incorrectly as someone you know. It, it, and they said, look, we can't trust this. We can't give it to all of our test subjects here in Redmond or middle aged white guys. You know, like this isn't working. <laughs> and uh, they they said they just said we're not doing it. And Amazon's like, oh, good, we'll do it. You know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he was only uh, Brian Hall was only at Amazon and was. Not really working in this part of the company, but um, 
he was only there for a year, year and a half. I don't remember the exact time mm -hmm. frame, but um, yeah, it came out that Amazon was going to continue selling this technology to law enforcement, and a number of employees There's and executives big, actually left. Big the company. departures, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he, he was one of them, mm -hmm. and good for him. You know, I mean, I you know to take a stand like that, and uh, he accepted a job, basically the same job at, at Google. Right? Doesn't for Google, Google do um, face recognition software for police departments? They um, certainly I do think face their employees were fighting it. Oh, yeah, that's right. on. I mean, that's how many right. stances do you have to take? Right. No, I, I actually. Yeah. No idea. IBM uh, just stopped doing. It. Of course, it wasn't yep. a big part of their bottom line. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, I think you're right. I think employee the employee revolt talked Google out of mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. Although they okay. do a lot yeah. of face yeah. recognition yeah. stuff. So yep. does Microsoft. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, Google or uh, Amazon is pulling the um, non-compete agreement uh, clause. Uh, they want to put a hold on this for 18 months. Um, this kind of thing is not unprecedented. I Google didn't. No. I, isn't there an example of an executive who went to oh, actually was uh, the guy from Microsoft? Kai, was it Kai? Kai Foley. Kai, yeah. Didn't they make him wait 18 months to get started? I think so, maybe. And then Amazon also sued um, a former sales exec, um, Philip Moyer, when he went to Google Cloud. You might point out, um, you might say, why doesn't Google do the same thing when their employees leave or Apple? They yeah. can't because uh, right. in the state of California, non-competes are unenforceable. Right. But then they are in they Washington. They are in the state of Washington. So. Right. Yep. Right. We need to fix that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I see what happens. I mean, the, the I yep. suit and the countersuit <laughs> by Brian Hall are fascinating reading. Um the, uh, you know Brian why they're the most fascinating? I think it's Amazon they're saying Google well, is a formidable competitor in the cloud. Uh, is there really there's a, when, there's a shock? No, but when they go out and sell, <laughs> they never say yeah. that. They say Google's a joke. Yeah, right? no, I, Microsoft's the only competitor from their point of view, right? Yeah, and even they well, they poo-poo Microsoft too. But yeah, you know, a couple of key uh, personnel acquisitions, and Google could be in the game. There so. you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so they say kind of he it, helped. The, the reason they're fighting it, this is they said he had an instrumental role in the 18-month 18, 18 roadmap for Amazon Cloud products or something. Yeah. Sure. So sure. they say he knows all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's no way to know the truth of it, but uh, you should read these right. things if you're interested in this at all because it gets really personal and it's... It's kind of interesting. <laughs> they, they they really kind of go at each other. And I will say in, in the wake of that Amazon blog post where they complained about Microsoft calling them out for secretly trying to keep the mm -hmm. uh, Jedi contract fight going, uh, it, Amazon appears a little un, uh, like off the rails to me. <laughs> I mean, they just seem like a little unsettled <laughs> they have a lot right of lawyers. now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway, I'm sure it will work yeah. out in the end. And the way it could work Somebody. out is he could do nothing for 18 months and get paid. What a great job that would be. Yeah. Although they're not offering to pay. Like, that's the thing. Like, oh, if, they if they said okay. to him, well, okay, well, he his salary will be paid in full by somebody sure. and as long as he well, waits, he could, I think. He could get unemployment, be <laughs> I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Yeah. Our next story, though, also is an AWS-related yeah. Um, story. I, I'm very, I love this story because <laughs> just last week I gave a special beer pick for Stuart Butterfield yeah. saying he was kind of a crybaby. And um, then he fought back. He, he announced last week a partnership with AWS that mm -hmm. gives more AWS um, employees full access to Slack and integrates Slack more deeply with Chime which is basically Amazon's attempt to do Slack and Teams. Um, it sounds so that's, like Amazon could use Slack. Yeah. You know, maybe Amazon should, I don't know, acquire Slack. I know. I, that's what I kind of wondered. I'm like, I wonder if that's the next step. Because they already had a partnership in place. Um, and this is a much greater expansion of the partnership. And it's funny, a lot of people said, oh, I bet this is targeted at Zoom. No, everyone, this is targeted at Microsoft. <laughs> like, this is yeah, who no, this, this is targeted is, at. 
this would keep uh, Slack out of Google's hands, which, by the way, they hate Google in case that last thing right. wasn't obvious. And that would yeah. be interesting for them. Yeah. Uh, and Google uh, or Amazon rather has uh, designs on the um, kind of office productivity market, even they though they've made zero yeah. headway. They have done yeah. a lot of work to try to build up a G Suite Office 365 type offering. And yeah, Chime Slack is at the heart a, of that. Yeah. yeah, so no one's heard of Chime, yeah. but everyone's nope. heard of Slack, and Slack, Slack could yep. be a great uh, <laughs> component of that and would expose Slack uh, probably to a lot more customers as well. Yeah. So it seems like, anyway, no one's discussing that officially, but it seems no. like that could be a a future direction here. It does, yeah. I was like, okay, see, that? See, that's not a crybaby move, Stuart Butterfield. That's a good move. <laughs> I Complaining that Microsoft, Microsoft is trying to kill their, your product. Obsessed. <laughs> That's a crybaby move. That's a obsessed crybaby move. Obsessed with Slack. Tiny Slack. Teeny little with Slack. It's millions They're of trying revenues. to kill us. They're trying to kill our product and our company instead of fixing their own product. Boo-hoo. You know, we were talking on uh, MacBreak Weekly yesterday, Alex, Lindsay, and I, about the sad story of Skype. And really, mm -hmm. it's kind of the sad story of Skype and Teams because Microsoft has these great products. Right. And they don't seem to really understand how to market it. Then along comes quarantine, and this guy called Zoom comes out <laughs> of nowhere and just takes over the world that should have rightly been Microsoft's. Yep. With Skype. I think yeah. with Skype, Teams, maybe had they um, made a conferencing solution, maybe, you know, Teams has conferencing. Yeah, but, but you know what, though? Uh, this is kind of an imp like a public perception thing. Um, mm. Where Microsoft really cares is in businesses they, and that's where teams use has exploded yeah, yeah. and i know yeah. zoom has seen some business use as well some probably some really good business use but mm -hmm. um I, I they can't be disappointed by the performance of teams and right. uh, in fact if anything they're ecstatic they finally have a new office product that's really taken off <laughs> um it will be so successful that i think it will subsume the skype brand at some point i mean i just don't see that not Same. happening but yeah uh, so it's it's still very successful. The other thing is, you know, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but when you add Skype and um, Teams usage together Teams. during this pandemic, it's it's pretty. It's pretty not huge. the same as Zoom, but it's it's not it's not horrible. It's, it's not like two to right. one. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, the reason Zoom to me is so successful is it's easy to use. Ease of use, you bet. Yeah. And um, Teams is not. No. Easy to use. And they could have honestly not. made Skype yeah. a little easier to use. Yeah, they right. could have. Well, they by, yep. by the way, they tried and everyone hated it. Remember? Oh, that's true. They, I know. they spent a couple of years yeah. fixing the back end. That's a good but point. But they, they were doing dumb stuff on the front end. Yeah, they tried to right? make it look like one of those kitty chat app things. They thought that's what I remember. Yeah. They had squiggles and yeah. you know, little confetti <laughs> things. You like the thought squiggles. Look, you liked I'm not them for like one second. Squiggles right now, Mary Jo. I don't know why you hate squiggles. <laughs> no, I mean, you was, like um, them. You said you like them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand when people use my words against me. The point is, see. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was yeah, surprised anyway. when you said it. That's what I. That's what I remember. I'm like, wait, you I like thought, that? I thought it's terrible. Nice, but anyway, okay. everyone else hated anyway. it, so it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so I, I think yeah. between those two things, they ended up just losing years of time. And yep. and then Teams happened, and come on, you're at Microsoft. Where are you going to put your backing at this point? Teams, right. like I said, it's exploded, you know? Yep. 75 million daily active users is the last count yeah. we have. I bet it's higher. And though That's like not 100%, but it's that's basically just businesses, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I people know. are paying for this thing. It's nice. Like, it's, it's a good yep. business. Yep. Yeah, so that's all. Yeah, that's all. That's it. Um, let's take a break, and then I do want to get your take on the number one topic from yesterday's Mac break, which is <laughs> okay. the move to ARM, yeah. something Microsoft did already. Sort yeah. of. With great success. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the, that's the asterisk at the end of that sentence. But first, a word from Barracuda. Yes, if you're in business, you know the name Barracuda, the number one security product for enterprise. Barracuda has a great tool for all of us using Office 365 email. I want to tell you about it. They call it Barracuda's Total Email Protection. You need it, especially with your employees working from home. 
They're getting emails used to be filtered, perhaps, on the you know business. That's the case for us. You know, we don't we don't worry too much about. In fact, we don't worry at all, honestly, about spear phishing and phishing attacks be, at work because employees won't get them. They won't even come to the inbox, thanks to Barracuda. But at home, there's nothing stopping it. Ninety-one percent of all cyber attacks start with. An email, spear phishing, ransomware, account takeover, conversation, hijacking. You've just sent all your employees at home. That's pretty terrifying. That's pretty terrifying. One click on the wrong email can cost you money, customers. It can cost you your reputation. Barracuda's researchers have seen a steady increase in the number, for instance, of coronavirus-related spear phishing attacks since January. And they've observed a recent spike of 667% since the end of February. 667%. This is why you need Barracuda Total Email Protection. You get all-in-one email security. You also get backup and archiving, which is really important. Some businesses have legal requirements, most do, for how much, you know, saving the email. There's AI-based protection from spear phishing account takeover and business email compromise. It needs to be AI-driven because... These attacks are constantly changing, constantly using new avenues. Well, for instance, um, right now, new attacks impersonating the World Health Organization. And attackers are pretty sophisticated. They use uh, domain spoofing, so it looks like it came from who? They promise information, you know, that could be valuable to your employees, like how to avoid getting sick and, and you know, click this link or open this file and boom, you are sick. To your, to your stomach. They also do a security awareness, which is really good. They train your employees so that, because they are the first line of defense against these attacks, so they know what to look for, what not to click on. They also have, uh, and I think this is really important, automated incident response, so you get options to quickly and efficiently address attacks. Because of course we know that these attacks happen. People do click on links, but the faster you respond, the more effective your response. So they make that possible, too. You can get right now, if you want, a free email threat scan of your Office 365 inbox. Find out how much is lurking in there. You may not like the answer. <laughs> I imagine that's why they give it to you risk-free. Here, try this. See what's in there. Barracuda.com slash windows. Look, you got to know, right? Hiding your head is not going to make it not happen. Barracuda.com slash windows. Please, again, make Paul and Mary Joe happy. Use that special address, not slash twit, not slash Mac break weekly. Heavens for fend. It's barracuda.com slash windows. Barracuda, your journey secured. Uh, according to Mark Gurman, who's a pretty good source at Bloomberg, Apple mm -hmm. in uh, two weeks... At WWDC, their developers conference, will begin the shift away from Intel towards. Now they say ARM, but it's really Apple design chips that are based on the ARM architecture. Yeah, so it's right. something a little so, different. Obviously, uh, Microsoft's been working on this publicly for three whatever years now, uh, and they've released several versions. Uh, between them, Qualcomm and Microsoft of the chips. Uh, the PC makers have released a few devices. Uh, and Microsoft has released a Windows 10 on ARM. And um, the system hasn't done very well. And, and there have been problems, right? So the compatibility and performance are probably the two biggest. Um, and they're working to fix those. And I think one of the things that Microsoft and or Qualcomm came to over time was that they were going to have to modify their chips to make PC software, especially the emulated stuff, run better. And in doing so, they would sacrifice some of the battery life um, advantages of the platform, but you know they would still come in with a system that could be very thin and light and small and still deliver really good battery life. Uh, maybe not maybe not 25 hours, but maybe you know 10 or 15 hours or whatever it was, or whatever it is. Uh, and they're getting you know they're getting there, but the, obviously the, so far it's been kind of a disaster. It hasn't worked very well. Um, you know Apple does things a little differently. They've been developing this in secret for several years. Um, they are no doubt doing work to – this will no doubt be tied to the iPad apps, you know, the Catalyst stuff, iPad apps running on Mac OS. Uh, could possibly see Mac apps running on the iPad after this happens as well. I mean, we'll see how that goes. But I think the biggest difference between what Apple is doing and what Microsoft is doing, without really knowing the details, 
is that Apple owns both ends of the stack. You know, they do the software and the hardware. Um, and so they can custom tailor these chips. They can they could have been doing it in secret over generations just to see what that might look like. If we have a, you know, maybe a low-end MacBook Air could run a certain chip and whatever that is, but for the pro devices, maybe down the road, we're going to need a much more powerful chip. And what, what does that look like? And um, I don't know, you know, Apple uh, sometimes seems to move pretty slow, but they also seem to get it right when they do things, you know, and so we'll see what they announce, if anything. But I think, I mean, they're talking probably about moving their entire product line over to a, the A-series ARM chips over time. You know, they've done it before. They moved from Motorola to PowerPC and more dramatically, they moved from PowerPC to Intel, um, you know, 15 years ago, ish, whenever that was. I, I mean, I, I think this is going to work and I, this, is gonna, this might, you know, this could be embarrassing uh, to, to the Microsofts <laughs> and Qualcomm's of the world uh, when this just works. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty bold, but but Apple's done it before, uh, successfully, yep. twice, yep. actually. And, Apple uh, loves thin and light, you know, yeah. and fanless mm -hmm. designs are a possibility. Uh, I think they did. It wasn't the original, the little MacBook, the 12 inch, wasn't that fanless? Was that yeah. fanless? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. very So, I mean, either. I'm sure they want something. Yeah, no, right. Of course, they had to use those terrible Intel like M series chips. Right. That's so part of it. But what about they want to get out from under Intel, too. What about battery right. life, though? You know, Microsoft promised with Windows on ARM that you'd get this amazing battery life. And the yep. first few machines that have shipped have not Gotten here's, where, the, the, here's where the I think Apple has an advantage. Life. Apple, that? because they're not using stock ARM chips from Qualcomm, yeah. uh, they have always, in both the iPhone and the iPad, used highly customized. They, they license the ARM yep. architecture, but highly mm. customized chips. Mm. And because right. they know exactly what software they're running, they can customize them. They get excellent battery life out of really mm. skinny batteries. Uh, mm -hmm. on their iOS devices. And I think that it, right. especially on the iPhone, and I think that's mm -hmm. because they can optimize the chip in a way that mm -hmm. a off-the-shelf chip just can't. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, Microsoft and Qualcomm can collaborate all they want, but they're two companies yeah. with different aims. And yeah. as far as Qualcomm is is concerned, they, they own a market that ships 1.5 to 2 billion devices a year. And here's a PC market where they can have 1% of 260 million devices a year. I mean, it's yeah. it's why, why would right. you put any effort into that? It just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, Apple can do what Apple loves to do: get rid of suppliers, uh, put their own, you know, as much of their own chipsets in there. And by the way, that's something they can market very effectively. Mm -hmm. We do this so you can have the best experience because we control the whole widget from beginning mm -hmm. to end, software and hardware. Um, it's a it's a compelling story, assuming you know compatibility works, mm -hmm. battery life is there. Uh, performance is there and you know we'll see but uh, this is an area this is the one area of the mar thank god <laughs> in, in a way that windows 10 on arm hasn't taken off from intel's perspective yeah. because it is the one area of the market where they're very weak and just today mm -hmm. by the way they announced a um, a new series of hybrid core cpus that have the little big design and it's it's kind of a unique one because there's one big core which is like a traditional Intel core core, if you will. And then there were four small cores, which are based mm -hmm. on Atom. And this is their uh, chipset to compete with uh, the Qualcomm based devices in the Windows space. So really thin, small, light, mm -hmm. and hopefully uh, good battery life type devices. So, you know, we'll see. But yeah, uh, I, Apple's the one company that can just pull this off because they're the only one that does all of it. Like they, they can do the yeah. whole, their whole range, you know. So we'll I see. mean, Microsoft but, uh, did custom. Microsoft did custom chips in like the Surface Pro X, right? That were built with other yeah. chip companies, right? Yeah. So the processor that's in that device is a co-design with. It's a Qualcomm chipset, right? So Microsoft yeah. obviously went yeah. to that and said we need these changes. But one of the things you see when you do that is so if you look at like a uh, the first eight thirty five devices, the second gen, I think it was the eight fifty chipset. Mm -hmm. Um, those devices could get 20 plus hours of battery life. But when you move to a chipset that's more optimized for running uh, Intel software and emulation, especially, it, the battery life drops by half, you know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, is, is half of 20 still very good? Yeah, it is. But I keep asking the same question when it comes to ARM mm -hmm. on, the, on the Windows side, which is you're still giving up so much from A lot of things. Yeah, yep. we still can't mm -hmm. run 64-bit apps. That will come maybe. And uh, maybe it, we'll see what the performance is like there. But 
Mm. Um, you're also giving up all the driver stuff, and that's yeah. I'm sorry, but like this stuff is just key. This is that's what makes a Windows PC a Windows PC. That's it the runs advantage. everything. Advantage again, Apple has they make all the hardware. Yeah, yeah. driver's yeah. not an issue, and they right. Right. Uh, to some degree their their developer. Uh, it's, it's kind of more captive their developer group <laughs> than uh, than say uh, it's pretty heterogeneous. It's a it's a wild yeah. bunch on the Windows side. I would say Mac right. developers are a lot more uh, uh, sheep like. <laughs> no, that's not yeah. that's not <laughs> no, quite no, right. No, but, but they're gonna but they're gonna do what there, Apple says. And they're they're gonna jump on this. To... Yeah, they're gonna jump on this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They might yeah. not have to do anything to jump on it. They might it, Xcode. I'm sure will just create ARM right. executables. Apple's been pushing, and, and we talked about this also. I mean, that's why Apple yeah. pushes its metal, uh, right. which is their hardware interface layer. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have to worry about what the GPU is, and, and to some degree, Xcode does the same thing. And uh, there already is an ARM switch in Xcode, you know. But uh, that's that's going to yeah. be, you know, it's unknown how hard or easy that'll be to do. And of course, it's always going to be mm -hmm. the high end stuff that's going to be the most that's challenging, the as you yep. said. Yeah. But uh, well, I, we, you know, they could do that. I mean, our, our the MacBreak Weekly crew thought this could be a five year transition. This is not necessarily. Oh, wow. Overnight. That, well, so uh, yeah, so that's one of the pieces. In other words, are they going to do just kind of the entry level machines at first? That was the consensus. And leave Intel yesterday. as sort yeah. of the, the pro class, mm -hmm. you know, workstation For a while. type devices. Yeah, probably. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. but it's Apple. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the long run, for, yeah. I, well, they just released a you know this incredibly expensive, very powerful Intel based Mac yeah. Pro. They're not going to mm -hmm. kill mm -hmm. that. So right, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a few years. But that, what they'll okay. do is they'll put yeah. in the low-end stuff next year. That's the rumor that it'll be in something next year. And I think right. they'll work their way uh, towards it. They've, Like I said, this is not new for Apple. They did it yeah. with they, they did the transition from Motorola to PowerPC, then the transition from PowerPC to Intel. So this will be the, th mm. the third of these mm. transitions they've made. They also, the, yeah. all, they have, yeah. they bought PA Risk some time ago right. uh, and mm. have more than a thousand chip designers and engineers in the chip division they have a very big chip division mm. Mm. i mean if if you were to if you look at microsoft and the history of windows you can find many examples of windows and really nt being ported to different architectures and and there is kind of a history of that there as well but the difference between apple and microsoft is that apple has literally just transitioned their entire use space to a new chipset three uh, twice i guess now and and will apparently be doing it a third time but um, you know, we've, we have made big technology transitions on the Windows side, for sure. Um, and, you know, the 32-bit stuff was a big deal. Going to NT and getting rid of 9X was a big deal. 64-bit um, is less of a big deal because once you have a flat memory space, that's actually kind of easy. Uh, the ARM transition has not gone well, <laughs> you know. Mm. And uh, it is in no shape to take over for the entire product line. So, mm. I don't, you know, Apple, I, I don't know, the, the worry or depending on your viewpoint, I guess. Um, if you're a Microsoft fan, I mean, the worry is they'll just get it right the first time. You know, I mean, we'll see. I, I, I'm really curious to see what they announce, what the schedule is, like you said, if it's going to be kind of a multi-year process or whatever. Um, that's interesting. You know, I think I think they're yeah. going to do a great job with it. Uh, we'll watch with great interest. It's good these things happen because it gives us something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, no, I, this is, I mean, otherwise it'd be very boring. And I like your idea of a Apple Microsoft bidding war over DuckDuckGo. I yes. know. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry, that's the other part of it. So, yeah, no, I, I someone on Twitter last week said, "Oh, Microsoft should buy DuckDuckGo." Microsoft Duck, should Go buy DuckDuckGo. Duck, yeah, yep. get rid of Bing, and it's like, what are you talking about? Like that will never it's happen. Like, that's not uh, happening. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Apple get it, buying them makes sense to me, right? Um, they pay Dr. a lot Go. of money right now. They don't own right a search now. engine. No, they, they spend a lot of money engine. with Google uh, every yeah. year. Yeah, just well, to, or actually, no, I'm sorry. They make a lot of money from Google yeah, every year. But you know year. who makes more yeah. money from that is Google because right. Google pays them 7 or $8 billion a year right. to get on iOS. Google makes $15 billion a year on, off of iOS. There you go. I mean, so there's mm -hmm. your revenues. Yeah. Um, not yeah. that they need to make money. I mean, I, I would say one of the deals with Google is that, uh, Apple rather is they want to get rid of Google as much as possible. Privacy. And uh, this is another thing they can market to users and say, look, we don't want you right. uh, to yeah. be affected by Google's like, look at the news. Look at what they've been doing. Right. This is a horrible mm -hmm. company. So we're going to we're going to do the right thing. And yeah, maybe we don't even we just don't make money on this. Who cares? It's still the best thing to do. And it would be good for DuckDuckGo because. Apple has infinite funds, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they, they'll yeah, want I think this the person... Thing. The, the person who suggested this about Microsoft buying it and ditching Bing, I'm like, I don't think you know how vested they are in Bing, Yeah. number one. Yeah. And number two, like, I, I just don't see them buying another search engine company, even as an aqua hire, you know? No, I don't. What was that? that? It just, someone, I, I was trying to break in. <laughs> I heard this weird sound. I'm like, what was that? Yeah, no, I think someone bumped the door. I don't know. Maybe the zombie apocalypse has started and I just don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. No, I, I didn't know if you had heard a rumor Apple was going to buy DuckDuckGo. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, no, no, nothing like that. But no, it, it, just, it was just, just triggered by that guy. Of, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. just makes sense. Like, um, yeah, because yeah. like who should buy DuckDuckGo? I mean, even, right. you know. Where did this come from? Is DuckDuckGo like have a big for no. sale sign on the net around its neck? No, or? I think <laughs> this guy just proposed it um, who is yeah. who yeah. tweeted to me and Paul It got Twitter. some traction, though. No, no, I saw it lots of places. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. 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 Like there may be for sale. Hmm. Uh, I got, a couple of things came up for me. First of all, doesn't DuckDuckGo get its search results from from Google? Well, uh, they don't have yeah, much so of a it, crawler themselves. Right, mm. right. So that's a problem. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think they derive them from multiple sources. I think this is kind of the the way that the non-Google search market works is that most of these players just using Google. derive yeah. inputs from a variety of places. Yeah. So Anyway. I mean, just Chromium, mm. just, uh, you know, do the Chromium thing to them. Like, we'll take what you have. Mm. Right. And we'll stop sending you stuff back. <laughs> I mean, the you know? key, of course, is that they don't, they don't, it's not where the search in information comes from, is where the information from you goes. Yeah. And that's where right. you have some right. privacy, of course. Well, I mean, there's the, I gave you the number. I mean, uh, and I don't remember where this come from, uh, but $15 billion a year yeah. they earn off of iOS users somehow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you using Google on the phone, that's how that works. They get it, there are ads. Pretty amazing. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, but that's but you know that's how Firefox uh, supports itself. Frankly, right. you know, the Mozilla Foundation gets hundreds of millions of dollars a year from uh, Google, mm -hmm. right? From searching. Right. Speaking of which, Brave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brave does not get hundreds of millions of dollars, and so those guys <laughs> they got other ways of making money. <laughs> well, they you know they built a business based on really privacy and performance. I'll ca I'll call it trust, just to make it simple, because. Um, it, it's a little radical. It's not quite Tor browser radical, but, um, you know, of the Chromium based browsers, it, it probably is the most, uh, private, you know, privacy. Yeah, we, and we, um, you and I like it a lot. I mean, I, I've been using it. You yeah. Use it, I know. But unfortunately, <laughs> I guess they started yeah. quietly. Yeah. Trying to make um, a little money on put, the side. Putting affiliate codes into certain searches and, uh, to mm. try to get a little money on the back end. And, the problem probably isn't that they're doing it. The, the problem is that they did it quietly and didn't say anything about it. And also, you know, they're selling the whole privacy thing. And so the, the good news is if you use Brave or if you're worried about this, um, they never – this was not a privacy breach of any kind. They didn't send user data to any of these affiliates or anything like that. But, you know, for a, a startup company that's trying to get, you know, get some – market share going or usage share or whatever um this is not a this is not the type of thing you and need at this point they've halted the practice uh, as soon as yep, they, they did caught. right away i mean yep. uh, they found out about yeah it. but that's like saying you know the guy was carrying my uh, television out to the front door when i caught him he dropped it and he left so it's like it's not taking it anymore it's, um yeah i don't know I, I i i like i like the whole idea behind brave um I, I mean, uh, this worries me. Uh, not not that they did it, but the impact that this will have on the company. It's how they make money. And the, the truth is, and by well, the way, I think the ref referrals were to, it was to uh, Bitcoin sites like Binance. Yeah, yeah, but, um, and, and then Brave has its own cryptocurrency. So that was mm -hmm. always a little strange also. But I do well, plus like everyone else, they probably don't know how to get money out of cryptocurrency, so it doesn't matter how much doesn't you really have. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, I interviewed uh, their chief of security some time ago on Triangulation Bcrypt, and I was pretty impressed by. I know that she wouldn't work for a company that was being sleazy, and I was yeah. pretty impressed by what they're doing. So I'm still, I'm not. Yeah. I feel like yeah, yeah, no, exactly. They made a mistake. I'm, I'm just they worried, took it back. I'm worried about the impression that this gives, right. not right. what they're doing. Um, Truth is, Firefox thing, is open source. It works yeah. really well, well. By the way, so so is Brave, <laughs> and that, I mean, unfortunately, one of the stupid <laughs> explanations that uh, Brendan Eich made was that, you know, he's like, it's been in the source code for months. I mean, all you had to do was look. 
It's like, yeah. It's uh, like, uh. <laughs> I really let you off the hook. No. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, deja vu. Yeah. How many, wait a minute. How many U.S. states are there? 50. <laughs> so I was, last, I was last count, to 50. discover that all of them are included in this suit, and they might combine with the DOJ. I'm sure they will uh, when they finally mm -hmm. announce their... So uh, where My question the, is, where's American Samoa? Where's Guam? Where's the District <laughs> yeah. of Columbia? I mean, exactly. like, they step up. Search. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, uh, you know, Google, like Amazon, like Facebook, uh, like Apple, is under investigation from various agencies in the United States and then again in Europe as well uh, over antitrust concerns. And one of these investigations that the states and the DOJ right now are separately doing is with regards to advertising and search. And the states, are then it's not definite, but what they're leaning toward as a remedy is to break the company up and actually take the advertising part and take it away from the rest of the company. So if you're familiar with how Google operates, uh, search <laughs> ads are 85% of their revenues right now. Or I should say ads overall. It's probably uh, YouTube yeah. and whatever else. But 85% of their revenues. Wow. So I don't remember exact numbers, but this company makes north of uh, $10 billion in revenues every quarter. So we're talking about 85 or 8.5 billion ad-related, 1.5 billion or more non-ad related. So that the, the company that emerges on the other side is kind of a pit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Compared mm. to the company. So we'll see. But uh, I, re I felt very strongly uh, when the EU, uh, U.S. antitrust case against Microsoft was going on that Microsoft needed and deserved to be broken up. And when I look at this, I think to myself, I don't feel as – I'm not as angry about it because I, maybe I just don't care as much about Google. But I, I, c I can see the case uh, mm. for doing this. Although, you know, a lot of people argued if Microsoft had been broken up in the end of the antitrust suit, it might have been even a stronger company. Oh, it would have been right? better for stockholders, right? Because you would have yep. had would have gotten you know, shares in three different shares, shares probably. Three big hit companies, yeah. most likely. Yeah. But now now no one cares anymore if they're one company and if they're exchanging information internally no. because they're like, eh, eh. No, that's good. That's <laughs> they're not America. a monopoly anymore. That's the way they're not a monopoly in operating systems anymore. <laughs> Walls, remember? There's a Chinese wall yeah. between between yes the between office, office and, the windows. and windows. Yep. We never talked to those. Did anyone people. hear that and say, "Oh yeah, that makes sense"? Sure. Yeah, they work at the same company in the same office building. And they don't talk to each other. That never. totally makes sense. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I want to correct myself. DuckDuckGo, I'm looking at their uh, sources page with somebody in the chat room mm -hmm. sent me, does not use links from Google. It's not used. Mostly yeah, okay. Bing. Yeah. Mostly Bing. Oh, really? Yeah. So maybe that's why the person suggested it. Could be. That would make a well, little more sense. Well, it explains why their search results are so terrible. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't want to hear from the three Bing users that listen to the podcast. It was a joke. 85% of their revenues come from advertising. Roughly. Which, yeah. which tells you they don't make a lot of money on Android devices. Yeah. Or right. so, anything. Or, or anything. Even or anything. Google, well, by the way, most, most of that is G Suite, suite. right? Right. But these are, also, these are also revenues. Well, they're, these are revenues. So um, profit might be I know. different. So that's for uh, Profit might be very part. different. I mean, they, I'm sure they lose yeah. money on hardware. But um, yeah, they have a small, you know, they have a small hardware business, not just handsets, but they make, uh, you know, laptops and home speakers and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, this, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's all, most of it's uh, ads. I mean, ads are what fund everything else that it does. And so you could make the argument that, in some ways, it's a little unfair, a little <laughs> uh, monopolistic of them that they're able to enter new markets because they have such dominance in this other one market. They can make any market. money, yeah. Yeah. They can, they can use their well, existing dominance. You could dominance. make that argument about AWS funding Amazon, sure. right? Sure. Yep. Oh, they're, they're next on the chopping block. Don't worry. They're, they're yeah. coming. They're <laughs> if, coming. If we had any antitrust regulation in this country, maybe. Yeah. Sure. When's the That's last? Fair. When's the last time? I know successful antitrust successful. suit in this country. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see the IBM. Oh no, that's not uh, AT and T. Might be the AT and T. <laughs> since ages, it was decades ago. Yeah, they're on, uh, yeah. American Steel. I mean, whatever that U.S. Steel. US <laughs> steel. Um, that's what always gets cited as the case, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. When, was, when was that? The fifties, yeah. nineteen. <laughs> yeah, even earlier. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so. Google pathetic results in 2019. 
in terms of handset sales of what well, this would be the pixel phone right i got some pushback from people who said you know you, you reported this in kind of a negative way because 7.2 million units in 2019 is the most phones they've ever sold <laughs> and that's true <laughs> Um, the problem is that most of those were the that low end Pixel 3a that they released uh, mm -hmm. the well, previous. Well, it's a great phone. Know, or, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a great phone. It's a great yeah. phone. But the problem for Google is that they re every fall they release a family of flagship phones, and not, 2019 was the second year in a row that their flagship phones sold less than their predecessor. So the Pixel 4 mm -hmm. only sold two million units, which was less than the Pixel 3, which sold less than the Pixel 2. So mm -hmm. this explains the rumors about the Pixel 5 maybe being a low-end device or a mid-range device because it can be less expensive. And those things tend to do okay. But just, again, 7.2 million units in a year, just to be mm -hmm. clear, in the January quarter, <coughs> Samsung sold 72 million units. Um, the smartphone industry as a whole, depending on the year, is anywhere between 1.5 and 2 point whatever billion units. Um, 7.2 million out of, I can't do the math off the top of my head, out of 2 billion is... A sliver. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this line so, is probably not, it's almost definitely not. So, okay. When I'm about to buy a new flagship Android phone, probably next year, not this year. Yep. Um, yep. What would you suggest, Samsung, instead of a Pixel? No, I, you know what? We, we can't say so far ahead. Um, I'm, look, I, I, know. I very much, I wish there was going to be an XL version, but I'm very interested in the 4A. I thought the 3A was a fantastic phone. Uh, yeah. It is a step down performance wise, but the camera's great, all that. This yeah. fall that we'll release a five, we'll have to see what that looks like. Um, mm -hmm. I would, you know, I know you don't like Apple. Next Apple month, has stepped up their game with you. Next month, there'll be a 4A probably. They've had yeah. that. They've been holding yeah, on to it. Yeah, but she's not going to go from a 3XL yeah. to a 4A. No, I'm going I mean, Android. Android yeah. out all, all right. the way. So, no, it's I mean, Android. Yeah, and the, the 4A I'm talking no, about. No, the Duo yeah. is a no. The Duo is a non-starter for me for That's my cool. phone, Right. Yeah. No, you get we get to wait till to see what happens. Look at the four A. So. That'll be next month. That's the yeah. No, no. She's talking about a year from now. So in other words, oh, a I would year. Look yeah, I might that. look a year from now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, see, yeah, the five A. What it looks like that. It'll There'll be, be Samsung is getting it together with the. You've seen my wife's yeah. pictures, right? My wife has the S twenty. Yeah. I know they're great. They're, I mean, the camera is great. Uh, she bought yeah. the S twenty. Well, I bought it and then I ended up not. I gave it to her, so it's like the S twenty Ultra. Yeah. She likes it. Yeah, she likes big phones. Uh, she has, she this is her third Samsung I did in a row. Too. Nice. Uh, and the you know it is it's the cameras great. Cameras great. Yeah. They really do good cameras. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Maybe okay, Huawei will be back. You and loved I, your P twenty, I remember. Or would you I, have a P forty? Uh, P thirty. So 30. I'm still using it. Like I, <laughs> this has the best <laughs> camera I've ever used in a phone. It's it's really? unbelievable. Yep. It's and good. President Xi can hear every call you make. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, and that's you know what? It's reassuring. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm embracing our Chinese yeah. overlords. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, he'll know you're an ally when uh, the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I expect Premier Paul to be in charge of the entire <laughs> East Coast of uh, media relations in the United yeah. States. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Huawei, well, actually, you can't. Yeah, so Huawei, how did you get it? You can't get a Huawei in the U.S., right? Yeah, no, they sent it to me for it to review. Oh, um, they've stopped doing oh, actually, that. Actually, I'm sorry. At that time, you could get it in the U.S. Okay. Um, yeah, I bought a P20 now, when you could. Yeah. And I loved it. I thought it was great. But Honestly, I'm not crazy about the software. Right. So I, I've replaced the launcher. Um, I use something called Lawn Chair, right, which is a yeah. take on launcher. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lawn Chair provides a pixel-like launcher. That's something you can consider if you buy a non-pixel phone, Mary Jo, too, is... You can change the okay. UI so that it looks exactly like the Pixel. So if you like that stuff, like it's out there. Mm. Um, it has the great camera and all that. So the performance obviously amazing. It, it, this this particular phone has the, their chipset. So they have like a Kirin, Kirin you know, yeah. uh, derivative, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. roughly the same as whatever the flagship from Qualcomm was at the time. But, but the only um, way I can get it is is getting them to send me a review unit. I don't even think they'll do no, that. No, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying is um, things may change by next year and they might be oh, back. Oh, you know, we'll see okay. So okay. right now, obviously, Huawei has a problem. <laughs> so, okay. um, and but things, that may change. Things but. may change next year is like, yeah, the definitely something. It's true. Gonna, I know. Gonna be, something's, something's gonna change. Gonna, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> gonna be really good or a pause. I don't move see Huawei moving yes. back in the U.S. To be honest, but. Oh, really? Yeah. At all? No. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, but I think the more important thing is that um, the restrictions could be lifted and they could put Google software on there again. That would and, be that would be, and then you could buy it. And, and gray it would, market it wouldn't matter. Yeah, even if it would, well, not gray market, whatever they'll they'll sell it on Amazon. It, you know, it it it's they could still sell here. I mean, no, no, they, they may not. Yeah, have a, and but even when they could big, sell here, they decided not to because you were very famously. You remember at CES. They thought they were going to announce these big deals with Verizon and AT and T, and they stood up and said, "No, we're not going to." Because well, they, they got, got pressure from the U.S. government. They got pressure from the U.S. government. So it, it is worth pointing out, not to get into the politics of this, but uh, scrutiny of Huawei started with the previous presidential administration. Oh yeah, um, that's why I don't think it's I, going to change. I yeah, but I, I, there's a big difference between we need to look into this company and this kind of crazy unilater unilateral action against them, uh, which, by the way, is mostly about their networking not about their phones i don't right. think anyone it's really the 5g cares about the stuff the 5g mm. gear yes yeah. the five because you know the understanding is that if you as a company can control the 5g infrastructure you're probably going to be the most powerful company on earth i mean right and uh huawei was the number one and probably still is networking company in the world and they were on the path to be the number one smartphone maker in the world when this happened <laughs> so now they're there's still number two by the way but um, they were racing. They were going to overpass or uh, surpass uh, Samsung. I think I'm trying to. I'm, it's hard to remember times now, but probably by the end of 2019. But uh, that may never happen, or it may happen down the road. I guess we'll see. Yeah, and then Huawei is, uh, th or actually China is threatening retaliation. Like, I'm surprised <laughs> that hasn't happened, right? Because you could put a stop to this right now by saying, "Okay, no, I well, we're not going to." We're not going to let Apple make anything yeah. here. So uh, have fun <laughs> blocking the the six phones Huawei would have sold in the United States. Um, you know, so uh, that would be. It's interesting to me that they have not responded in that fashion because I think that might have that might solve a few problems. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to actually even say this, but it sounds like China has cooler heads are prevailing yeah, in China and a little than they more are. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but Leo, the communist, you can't trust those That's because him commies, I swear. They um, haven't changed. They haven't, Triger can't change his stripes, Leo. The other phone you should look at, Mary Jo, is the OnePlus. Yeah. I think those are really nice, too. Yeah. They are beautiful. The camera still falls a little short, but again, no. by next year, that could change. Is camera Maybe that, that important change. to you, Mary Jo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. she takes she one of takes my top pictures. features. Yeah. I take a yeah. lot of beer pictures, as you guys know, and cats. Yeah, you beer and you know, cats. You don't, want, you don't want a washed out picture of beer. I mean, think about <laughs> or it. cats. You don't want bad pictures of either one. Unfortunately, you get the contrast. One plus did have an X ray filter, which they took out, but that was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, you've been very good, Paul. I'm going to let have. you do a little bit of Xbox. Just a little. Really, just a touch. Whew. There's a lot of stuff, but none of this is that huge, I guess. Um, so Microsoft, with its consoles, has has started doing something called Digital Direct, where remember you used to get like a like a key card in there that would have a product code on it, and then you go to your console and you laboriously kind of type it, um, you know, using the controller, which is like one of the worst user experiences of all time. And, you know, modern consoles often ship with like three games and that's how they come. And, you know, it's kind of a pain. And so what what Digital Direct does is it puts them on the console or it puts the code on the console. So it actually downloads after you sign in for the first time. So it doesn't actually tie it to the console, which is the thing I was worried about. What it really does is when you when you sign into that thing with your Microsoft account, it will tie those free games to that account. So if you later sell the console you keep the games. They're part of your account. Uh, but it gets, it prevents them or it allows them not to have to ship those stupid cards. It allows users not to have to type in those stupid numbers, which is great. Um, but you want to be really careful. Make sure you sign into the console with the right account the first time because when you do it, it's going to be tied to your account. So that's happening now. I guess that's new, new consoles are going out with this. So if you buy an Xbox console that has, um, you know, like the bundle of games or whatever, that's that's how they will come going forward. Um, and then I, I heard this and I, I, I had this vague memory that Microsoft, I, I don't remember when it was, but maybe when the Xbox one first came out or soon thereafter, maybe it was started, maybe actually, maybe it started with the, uh, the version of the S console that didn't have the disc drive. There was this rumor that Microsoft was going to do a disc to digital program where if you could, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you ship them the disc, I don't know how it works exactly, but you have discs and they could say, okay, you own those games. 
So we're going to add them to your account digitally and then you have to get rid of the, you know, I don't know how that would work, but th this was a thing and it has never happened. And uh, I asked Brad about this because Brad is really up on the uh, Xbox stuff. And he said, look, this digital direct thing has been in the works for five years. So they sometimes these things just take a while. So it's possible that disk to digital is still happening. So if you've been waiting for that, um, you know, it's coming down the pike. Or I should say it could still be coming down the pike. Um, and then, uh, you know, there were a couple of events um, that were canceled last week. The, the Android beta event uh, was canceled. And then Sony was going to have a PS5 game event. Um, which has now been rescheduled. So that's happening tomorrow on Thursday. So if you're interested in your first peek at uh, PlayStation 5 games, that will be happening soon. Uh, I am interested because I want to see the next Call of Duty, which I suspect will be unveiled at this event. It's probably going to be called, what was it, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I think was the name of it. Those names are starting to get like Microsoft product names. But anyway, that's tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> We're going to stream you know. that live, by the way, so... Oh, neat. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I, it's, I bet it's going to be great. I'm the the stuff we've beautiful. seen. So. A lot of eye candy, you know. Mm. Yep. Yeah. We'll do that right um, after Tech News Weekly. I think it's a one o'clock start time okay. in Pacific. So twice a, no, twice a month, Microsoft announces the games that are coming to Xbox Game Pass across console and PC. So they made that announcement today for the first half of the month, even though it's the 10th. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff. I, I, the only thing in here that is of particular interest is No Man's Sky is coming tomorrow, uh, oh. June 11th, on console and PC. Huh. So that's that's very interesting. Um, so I'll look, I'll look for that. And then this could have been a tip, but I already had a tip. So we can consider this a, a hybrid tip news item. A freebie. Uh, Microsoft, yeah. They launched a, a big Xbox sale. Uh, and it's hardware and software. 70% uh, off. Uh, up to 70 uh, percent, I should say. Sorry, up to 70 percent off on over 600 digital games. Um, there are some games in there that I would consider buying that literally now cost like two dollars and forty nine cents. Like there's some, there's some really you should if you're an Xbox guy or girl, <laughs> whatever Xbox person, please uh, you know go, make sure you spend some time. But you can get 100 bucks off Xbox One X, uh, Xbox One S all digital version. That's the one without the uh, the drive. Uh, 10 bucks off an Xbox Design Lab controller. I actually need a new controller. The soonest it will arrive right now is July 8th. And I jumped on this because I literally was looking for a controller on Amazon. And your two choices are not to get one or to pay $120 for one. Jeez. <laughs> just just to be clear, an Xbox controller costs $60. <laughs> so uh, There's a lot of scalping off. going on right now. Yeah. So you could get one from Xbox Design Lab, but um, you're going to wait a month unfortunately, and maybe longer now. I, it's probably getting worse. I think this is pandemic related, don't you? Like this is... Yeah, production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can't crank them out. Yeah, so uh, definitely, again, if you're an Xbox person, uh, do look at this sale. There's uh, literally 600 games are on sale, some of them up to 70% off, um, and some of, the, some of them are really cheap. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um we yes. are going to get to our back of the book in just a second. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, I let you uh, take a little break while I talk a little bit about IT Pro TV. We know our listeners love, they're geeks. They love technology. That's why they listen, right? Have you ever thought about a career in IT? Maybe you've been put off by the, you know, the challenge of getting that first job because you don't have the certs. Well, I got a way to get the certs. Get them fast and have fun doing it. And after you get your job in IT, how to keep your job in IT. Get better at every bit of it. It's IT Pro TV, a great resource for anybody interested in an IT career. If you're not sure where to start, then IT Pro TV has, I think, a really nice program. It comes with their um, premium membership. You get a learning coach who will work with you to help navigate the IT career roadmap that will assist you in finding the perfect career for you. You'll start by setting goals with your coach. The coach will implement an IT training program to help you reach them. And there's a, a really big IT career path library there that helps you understand what the different IT careers are like, what you'll be doing day to day, how much money you can make from entry-level IT to cybersecurity, it's a great way to figure out what part of IT you're most interested in. And then, of course, IT Pro TV has the training 
to help you get that job. And when I say training, you're not going to sit in a boring classroom. You're not going to be going through big, thick books. You're going to be, it's just like watching us, only it's all about IT. They have 4,000 hours of on-demand courses. They're all super up-to-date. That's one of, the th one of the reasons they're always making more is there's always updates. The questions and the tests change. Software gets new revisions. Operating systems get updated. But that's why IT Pro TV is so cool. They always have the latest information, the latest courses. It's never dry, never dusty. The best teachers teaching engagingly and with deep knowledge about the subjects they care a lot about. And you will, too, because of it. They have a live chat room going on, just like we do during the live streams. Uh, they're also the official video training partner for CompTIA. Those CompTIA certs are really, for many people, the, the base cert you've got to get. A+. Plus, Security Plus, uh, Network Plus. In fact, IT Pro TV has 12 CompTIA on-demand courses. So those certs, they got them covered for you. They're, they're the official partner. Now's a great time to maximize the potential of your team, too. IT Pro TV has coaching for teams and, of course, training for teams. IT Pro TV. Get the certs you need to get a job in IT. Get the skills you need to keep that job and get more money. Get better jobs. Let IT Pro TV guide you into the IT career that's best for you. There's some great opportunities out there. Now is a great time. Maybe you're out of work. Maybe you're home. You got a little free time. This is a great time to start. Go to itpro.tv slash windows. By the way, even after you take the classes and you take the tests and you get the certs, they have practice tests too, by the way, uh, they're going to stick with you to help you get that job too. They do the whole thing. itpro.tv slash windows. Remember this offer code, though, WW30, because that's going to get you 30% off all consumer subscriptions. As long as you stay active, you pay 30% less, and that's a great deal. ITPro.tv slash Windows. Show your support for the show. Use that code WW30 for an additional 30% off the lifetime of your active subscription. ITPro TV. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. ITPro.tv slash windows all right we continue on paul therott time for your tip of the week so th this is this is such a long story behind this uh tip but uh, in we live in kind of a large house in pennsylvania and we use mesh wireless networking and honestly it works fine even though the house is pretty big um the problem is we also use sonos and sonos wants you to dedicate a channel on the wi-fi uh. to them which you can't do with mesh networking uh. So sometimes you get audio cutouts, uh, especially in the far corner of the house where the big speakers are. And this has been kind of a problem for us this year. So um, running Ethernet out to the sunroom is not impossible, but it would be arduous and uh, expensive. And, you know, and, and last weekend when it, kind of, it blew up again, I was like, oh, I like, OK, maybe I'll just run Ethernet, blah, 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 whatever. But then I remembered something. There's something called power line networking and power line networking uses your the electricity in your house to put Ethernet jacks in you know, opposite corners of the house. It won't work for everybody. Um, it requires, it, it gets, I guess it gets slower over distances. Um, but in my house, I, the one thing we did do when we move in is we completely upgraded the entire electrical system. It's all new. And from the electrical box to where the router is to where the sunroom is, actually, it's kind of a straight shot. So the chances were pretty good in my case that this was going to work fantastically well. So I bought a two-node, um, I think it's called TP-Link uh, power yeah, that's line that's the networking. ones I use. They're great. Yep. Tested um, how I have actual Ethernet into my office, uh, tested the speed that, tested Wi-Fi from here, tested Wi-Fi out to the sunroom, tested, you know, power line. And honestly, it's fantastic. Like it, in my case, at least, like this thing, it was 100 bucks, but um, – it's, it's something I don't think about a lot. I think a lot of it, you know, we always tend to think Ethernet or Wi-Fi. But, um, and like I said, depending if the how, if your wiring is old, you know, if, if the distance is too great, et cetera, it might not work, but, or it might not work well. Um, all I want to do is, <laughs> I just want a speaker to work. I mean, please. So, yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is, uh, this is, I've, I've only just started using it so far. It, it seems to work perfectly. And, uh, I didn't buy a kind that has – some of them have Wi-Fi built in, by the way. I didn't do that because, you know, again, that would screw around with the mesh networking. But um, it works great. So something to think about. It, it's uh, a nice alternative to either yourself going through the walls and doing this or hiring someone at great expense to do this. Um, 
you just you literally just plug the thing and you hit like a pair button either one just there's nothing to do it works great so it did work in my case so something something to think about i if you use it too i think it's a really it's not your father's yeah. uh power line networking it's got a lot better yeah, and this you know this coax versions of this. There's all kinds of different things mm -hmm. that we actually pulled all the coax out of our house. Thank God. But um, uh, my house was almost built. I mean, I'm surprised the house stayed up after the coax was gone. I think that's they used that for rebar or something. But um, <laughs> it's just I, there was there was a jack and there was at least one jack in every single room. And many rooms had multiple coax jacks. I mean, God forbid you couldn't see a, <laughs> a TV from any location in the. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that worked for me. Uh, and then as far as the app pick goes, you may recall, I don't know if it was last week, two weeks ago, at some point I mentioned uh, that I was using Foxit um, PDF Reader. And, yeah, last week uh, because we talked I, about this. Yeah. It was last week. So yeah. I don't want to use Adobe because it's awful, but the, Foxit itself is actually kind of a, it's also kind of a heavy app. I, I think the only thing that recommended it is it wasn't Adobe. Uh, but two people have emailed me in the past week and they both recommended something called Sumatra PDF. Uh, which is free, and it is one of the ugliest programs you'll ever see. But you know what? <laughs> this thing is really lightweight, and it comes up fast. It does everything. It does the table of contents. It has all the features. Uh, it's a wonderful, and it also supports EPUB. So, hmm. you know, some of the stuff we've lost as we've moved from legacy edge to the new edge is all those PDF features. And, by the way, the ability to read EPUB files. And uh, this application does both of those things. And uh, as, as as ugly as it is, because it, it really, it's not just old fashioned looking. It's it's not very well designed, uh, or it's not very pretty. I guess is the way to say it. But it, lightning fast and really lightweight. It's it's nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be. I will definitely be using this going forward. It's really nice. nice. So thank you to the, the people who recommended why don't, that. Why don't you make the Therat PDF reader? Yeah, that could be your next project. Why don't you guys mind your own freaking business? Okay? <laughs> no, I, I, you could take um, Sumatra and fork it. Fork it. And right. open Actually, source it. Actually, what they should do is use Project Reunion or whatever, or re, whatever that thing's called and put a modern UI on top of it because the application yeah. is solid. Like, it's great. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it just it looks – it just look, you'll see if you install it. It's it's weird looking, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it is it, – like I said, it is so fast. And I – Loaded my, you know, my book document is 500 pages long. You click on a, uh, like a chapter heading or whatever in the table. Con it's like, it's mm -hmm. instantaneous. Boom. And you close it, you come back. It's exactly where it was. It, it loads the document you had last. It's really, it's just an, it's a great app, even though it, again, it's a little design challenged. Sumatra. I mean, go to their website. Their website's ludicrous looking too. Like you can, <laughs> you can tell, you can they tell don't the have same design person. Sense. A lot of good it programmers like, don't have the design. Yeah. Side I'm surprised it. they don't yeah. have flash on it. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Tech. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley has an enterprise pick of the week. I do. So if you're a windows virtual desktop user, you may have been wondering like I was, where is MSIX app attach? Yeah. This was like, supposed to be one of the big features of WVD. Um, they talked about it a lot at Ignite in the fall. And then when the spring refresh of WVD came out, it was nowhere in sight. And when I asked about it in April, they said, we have nothing to share. This seems to be a, a trend of comments from Microsoft. We have nothing to share. Oh. Um, but then shortly after, right around the time they released the May 2020 update, um, they put out some internal documentation saying, hey, guess what? MSIX app attach is actually now in public preview. So if you have Windows 10 Enterprise with the May 2020 update, you can start testing it out. Um, the reason this is a big deal is MSIX app attach means IT pros can skip having to maintain multiple master images for different apps. And they also can package all the virtualized apps into a single image. So this is going to make your life way easier and less complicated and probably let you use WVD in some new ways if you try out this feature. So I would say if you have 2020 Enterprise, uh, may, the May update, uh, you may want to go and enable this capability and get on the public preview of App Attach and see how it will impact your WVD installations. All I can say is that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any of those acronyms. 
At all. I know, MSIX. <laughs> MSIX is a packaging technology that's become very popular for Windows 10. Okay. Um, okay. So that's what that is. Yep. And now... <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Uh, sure is. Sure is. The code name pick of the week. Right. So I've mentioned this code name a few times, but because Microsoft has said the fast ring is going to start testing 21H1 in June before the end of this month is over, I think it's a good time to bring it up again. The next code name is Iron, also FE, the periodic table element symbol. So, um, Microsoft says these days that their feature updates are not exactly aligned with these code names. Um, but if you start testing 21H1 in the fast ring in the next couple of weeks, you may start seeing references to FE. And FE is the code name for the set of functionality that Microsoft intends to complete by December of this year and make some of, some of those pieces will make it into 21H1 when it comes out next spring. Mm. So Iron is the code name. The code name for 20H, 20H2 is Manganese. Remember, they're going along mm -hmm. the periodic table. So um, Iron is the next big code name that we'll all be talking about. Iron. So Mary Jo, you may be fascinated to know that the local minor league baseball team is the Iron Pigs. <laughs> named oh. after the Bethlehem Steelworks Iron Pig Furnaces, and that their mascots are named Ferris and Fifi, as in F-E-F-E. -E -F -E. <laughs> nice. And what are the mascots? They're pigs. <laughs> of course. They're pigs. Fifi, the pig. Fifi. Nice. This Fifi's is great. Girl. Maybe maybe Iron, Windows 10 codename Iron, could have Fifi or Ferris as its yeah. mascot. Just, yeah, su just yeah. suggesting. They're not doing anything right now. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> that yeah. is for sure. Yeah. Although I noticed they haven't uh, <laughs> refunded my money. Um, Did you? You had season tickets, tickets oh. to see the Iron Pigs? Well, we had like nine nine season oh, how packs. Fun. My oh. wife has the annoying, we'll be sitting outside or watching TV or something, and my wife will suddenly say, oh, uh, we would have went to a game tonight. <laughs> Oh. So the, like, uh, she did this last week. She's done this like five uh -huh. times already. And I said, um, you need to stop telling me this. Yeah. <laughs> this no. is not. I've been doing that to helpful. Lisa. Yeah. We'd be on it's a plane to Budapest right now. Yeah. She oh. does not like that. Does not like that nope. at all. Nope. Don't want to hear that. Mm -mm. Don't want to hear it. No. Is it single A ball, Paul, or double A, triple A? Do it know? is triple A. Triple A. Oh, that's good. That's the good stuff. Uh, let, me, let me make sure that's true. It's uh, the, the games are fantastic. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, we we used to have a, a non non affiliated uh, minor league team in uh, Petaluma. Triple A, yeah, Triple A. Oh, that's that's the real mm -hmm. deal. That's the good stuff. Yep. Nice. Yep. They're just about to go to the, the the big show. Uh, <laughs> it's let's, the show. The what? The medium show. It's the next. <laughs> it's the penultimate yeah, it's, show. It's the penultimate <laughs> show. That's right. <laughs> uh, we have a beer pick from Mary Jo Foley. Long awaited. Yes. Um, the beer pick for today is from Brooklyn. Finback Brewing. The beer is called Yellow Cake. You Which, ever had a yellow cake? You know, those sheet cakes, yellow cakes. I don't think cakes. that's what they're talking about. <laughs> I, I think this no. is more uh, radiation related, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, it tastes like yellow cake. It could go I'm both ways. You. It could go I, both ways. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. taste like yellow cake. <laughs> no, it's it lemon, does not taste lactose, like radiation. vanilla. I think it is cake. Yeah. 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 It is. Oh, okay. So if you can't imagine this, it's an IPA that tastes like yellow cake. Um, and I grew up on Duncan Hines yellow cake mix. Oh, yeah. Yep. It tastes exactly like that. A lot of vanilla, <laughs> a little hysterical. sweet. It's <laughs> delicious. Um, it's so there. Are the, there's this category of IPAs called milkshake IPAs. Yeah. And what they do is they add lactose, I believe it's powder, oh, um, to the beer. Gives it and it gives it this. At what point do IPAs just jump the shark entirely? What, what's I going know. on here? <laughs> you got it so, right here. you know, there's Imperial Stouts that taste like donuts and cake. And why can't you have an IPA that tastes like why cake? Why not? If you, why not? Why and if you're not? curious about that, look look for any kind of a milkshake IPA at a store near you, and you'll get the approximate flavor of what this is. It's very, usually very um, vanilla heavy, um, but not always. And definitely kind of milky. It looks milky in color sometimes, but it has a very smooth taste because of the lactose. 
does not taste like an IPA. If Paul Thorat were here and I could give him a sip, I think he would like this. Eric Duckman has an I interesting... I do like cake. Who doesn't? <laughs> Eric Duckman doesn't? has an interesting explanation for lactose. It's a okay. sugar you can add to a beer that the yeast oh, right. will not Oak eat. sugar. That's right. It's a milk sugar, not powder. So it yep. does, unlike other sugars, which the yeast will eat, turn into alcohol, this stays yep. with the beer. The sugar. It tastes don't like, like sweet. Lactose, yeah. So it gives it a sweet flavor. Yeah. It's very good. I want some. No That's relation good. to the un, uh, un uh, purified uranium yellow cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. not, that not that bad. wouldn't probably be that tasty. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just Is it saying. Chernobyl but... quality? Chernobyl <laughs> quality yellow cake. <laughs> I never heard that use the yellow cake. That's hilarious. That was the whole thing when the uh, the ramp up to uh, the WMDs and the war yes. in uh, Iraq. That's was right. That's that, that that's oh, yellow yeah. cake. That's where that came from. Oh yeah, wow, really? Cake. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think maybe yeah. that's it's been purified now, and uh, we don't have to talk about that. Anymore. Talk about that anymore. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, uranium, uh, uh, unrefined uranium. And uh, apparently, the Iraqis were trying to buy some from uh, Africa. Oh. And that was the oh. one of the one of the pretexts for. Yeah, the that Iraqi worked out war. well, right? Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, no, <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, nothing to be embarrassed Jeez. about there. Oh man. <sighs> okay. Uh, <laughs> On that cheerful cake On that note. Cakey note. <laughs> um. There are about 800 titles for this show. I just don't know well, where I'm going. But I think I'm liking Ferris and Fifi for the moment. Uh, I know. Yeah, that's it. pretty good. Make sure you spell them correctly. F-E-R-R-O-U-S and F-E-F-E. -E. I'm thinking. Yes, that's yes. right. Paul Therat, he is the king of the Iron Pigs. He is their official <laughs> team mascot. mascot. How does he get the big stadium? Yeah, it's nice. Coca-Cola Park. Coca-Cola Park. Wow. Yep. Man, oh, that's listen, the best. It, that's like baseball like it food. used to be. You know? Rachel, you would love it. Does they have craft beer there? It's amazing. It's that's, a it's a, I, I like drinking beer at baseball. Oh, I can ignore baseball. No, it is, it it is a, a hot good dog. stadium. It's really nice. Yeah. Oh man. Tofu pups. Awesome. Tofu pups and yellow cake. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And craft beer. Breakfast what could go wrong? Champions. <laughs> have giant pretzels, you would like that. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Like, that's the, you're living the land of pretzels. Yeah. Yeah, you have the best pretzels. They're pretty good cheesesteaks at the stadium. Not bad. <sighs> <laughs> one day. One Someday. day. Paul Thorat, Thorat.com. He's got lots of time to write. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> His uh, Windows, the guy, Field Guide to Windows 10 is available at leanpub.com. Great book. Always updated. Now with uh, more 2004. Oh, my God, Leo. I never said anything about this. I've been working on the chapter that uh, I'm writing about Linux. It's not out yet, but Linux subsystem for Windows. I'm writing about PowerShell. Yeah. If the chapter about, has like 800 sentences, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All <laughs> yeah. work and no play nope. makes Jack. No, no? It's, this is no. quality how-to instruction. Nice. I must yep. read. Wow. You got to get it. Leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley's writings are uh, beautifully enshrined at allaboutmicrosoft.com. <laughs> uh, baked into a nice yellow cake from Duncan Hines. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Uh, and together they come here each and every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC, for our fabulous Windows Weekly program. You can watch us do it live at twit.tv slash live. There's links there to all the video and audio streams. I think there's six in total. Pick the one you like. Listen along. While you're doing that, you can chat along. Type along with the show at irc.twit.tv. That's our custom chat room, which is open all the time, 24-7. So if you're ever looking for some geek companionship, that's a place to go, irc.twit.tv. After the fact, the shows go up to twit.tv, the website. Uh, in fact, it's twit.tv slash www for Windows Weekly. They're also on YouTube. You can watch them there. You can ask your... Voice assistant, play the Windows Weekly podcast. It should play it automatically, the latest episode. If it doesn't tell me in, I'll get to it. I'll get it. <laughs> I've been hankering to beat up that Cortana, I <laughs> yep. tell you. Um, Let's go, Alex. You've been, you've been waiting for this. <laughs> Any excuse. Any excuse. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't listen live, you can uh, join us. Uh, you know, the chat room obviously doesn't make a lot of sense, but you can join us after the fact. 
in a, our asynchronous conversation at our uh, forum, twit.community. Very nice discourse forum over there, twit.community. Community. I'm in there every day, and there are other of our hosts that are popping in. Mary Jo goes in every once in a while. So you're welcome to join us there. Uh, please, though, the best thing to do, golly, would be subscribe. Mm. That way you get it automatically in your podcast application the minute it's available of a Wednesday afternoon. Paul, Mary Jo, have a great, safe week, and I will see you next week on Windows Weekly. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, where each week I'm joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and a rotating crew of Android journalists, developers, and enthusiasts, where we talk about the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. You can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash AAA or find the show in your podcatcher of choice. That's All About Android.